everyone. This is John Mark Johnson Jr. again, host of Relationship and Truth. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on where I am regarding the Greek course that I will be teaching uh, next year. Uh, this Greek course is going to happen at least online, no matter what happens, but I would prefer to actually have in-class students. And so at the church uh, that I currently attend, Valley Christian Center of Hazleton, Idaho, we are currently looking for students to participate in this. So far we've had four people sign up and we're looking for at least two more. Um, it's a small church and so yeah, you're not going to have huge numbers of people, but we're looking for at least two more before we commit to a formal uh, in-person class. Otherwise, we'll just be doing the, well, I'll be doing the online version uh, with you wonderful guys. And uh, hopefully it'll be something that everyone can get something out of. And in this video update, I'd specifically like to tell you uh, guys what the, um, uh, what the plan is as far as each of the lessons. This is going to be a very, very, very basic overview because I'm actually revising a lot of material from other courses that I've done and that kind of thing. Um, but still, I wanted to give you uh, kind of an idea of where I'm going with it. So let's bring up the table of contents here. A lot of times when I do lessons, and this is the same thing as when I taught uh, at the high school level, I went ahead and I made um, my not only my own lesson plans, but I also made a lot of my own lesson materials. Just because there's lots of great stuff that's out there, but I really like to make things my own. And it helps me learn more, and also I feel that it makes me a more effective teacher when I know exactly what's going on with the material. Uh, for one, you never get blindsided with something that you don't know, you know, what it was for whatever reason. And then also, you have to invest the time to make sure that everything's right. Um, it tends to make you a lot sharper. Now, this particular course is going to be one of the briefer courses that I've done. Um, and, you know, ideally when you're, you're learning Greek, you would have a lot more time uh, to learn it. You'd want at least a full semester, if not two full semesters, to learn basic Greek. Um, but for your average churchgoer, that just really isn't practical. So we have, and particularly me, um, I've decided to do this as a 10-week course of only 10 lessons. Now that is significantly reduced from... Uh, most uh, Greek courses that you're going to take. Most Greek courses are usually going to have over 40 uh, different lessons, minimally. Uh, sometimes considerably more, but usually at least 40 different lessons. We're only going to have 10, and that includes our introductory class and our conclusion class. So that's not going to be a whole lot. And the reason for this, like I said, is we're uh, basically tailoring this course to the average church grower. The average church grower um, you know, really doesn't have time to really full-on learn the language like would be pref uh, preferable. So what we're focusing on is basically giving them the tools that they need to identify errors and also um, keep from making a lot of uh, those same errors and also identifying when other people are making errors. That is, there's you know, a lot of people out there in the church today, they really love to claim this meaning or that meaning uh, based on what the, the Greek actually means. And they can come up with some really interesting interpretations, most of them very faulty. And while I can't necessarily teach the average churchgoer the, uh, the complete language in 10 easy lessons, what I can do is I can teach them enough to know when somebody is be playing fast and loose uh, with the Word of God. And that's exactly what I intend to do in this course. So, going through the table of contents here, first uh, lesson is just going to be an introduction to the Greek New Testament, um, basically how the uh, New Testament has come down to us, uh, the origin of the language, basic things like that. It's not going to be uh, a super intense course, it's mostly just going to be a little bit of a history lesson and some fun background material. It's not going to be super in-depth. It's mostly just a, a getting to know everyone and also getting to know where the text comes from kind of day. And, you know, it's always nice to have a, a relatively easy day to lead into things. Next week is going to be focusing on being able to read Greek. Now, of course, anyone who knows the Greek language or any foreign language knows that just being able to read it and understand it are two very different things. But in order to get to the point where you can understand anything, you have to first be able to read it. And so in this lesson on reading Greek, we're going to be talking about the Greek alphabet, uh, the basics of Greek punctuation, 
uh, syllabification, those kinds of things. Um, basically making sense of what is on the, the page, at least in being able to pronounce something and recognize what the letters are and things like that. Um, still a relatively basic lesson, not going to be too terribly intense. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of the specifics on accenting and those kinds of things, uh, just because this is 10 lessons and we don't want to burden people with uh, too much. Um, so it's basically going to uh, limit it down to the alphabets, uh, diphthongs, uh, syllabification, and uh, the rough breathing, breathing mark, of course, and the four major uh, punctuation marks that exist in Greek. And that's pretty much all that we're going to leave it at. Um, it's really hard to do more than that in one lesson. And um, like I said, there <laughs> uh, we really don't want to uh, burden people with uh, things that is going to be too much. We'd like to keep all of these lessons relatively short, but still manageable. And so there's lots of material that we could include, but it's going to get left out just because it's not within the scope of what we're trying to do. We are trying to give people a basis for understanding what is correct to say from the Greek New Testament and what isn't. We're helping people distinguish between truth and error. That is our emphasis. And so we can't include everything, but we are going to include the essentials that help get to that goal. And then week three, once you're able to read Greek, that doesn't mean understand it, but read Greek, then we're going to talk about a lot of the major uh, pitfalls. And I've listed a lot here. That may change. Uh, but we're basically going to talk about places where translators get things wrong, and especially people who are exegeting the text from the pulpit, because lots of people like to say from the pulpit, and this is what the uh, Greek really means, and they choose, you know, basically whatever meaning happens to preach the best, you know, and if it preaches well, then, then you go with it. And in a lot of modern churches, no one's really going to be able to hold you accountable anyways, right? Um, because the average churchgoer doesn't know the first thing about the Greek language. So you could claim that this word in the Greek really has something to do with giving your pastor, you know, $20 in cash every week. And most people, they might think it's a little bit strange, but they wouldn't be able to call you on it. We want to produce people who are able to call people on these kinds of problems. They're able to identify truth and error. They could be able to tell when people are handling the text carefully and respectfully and when they're not. And so we're going to take an entire lesson for this. And of course, we're going to cover this throughout the rest of the lessons as well, potential pitfalls and that kind of thing. But we're going to take out one lesson where that's the only thing that we're talking about. How can this go wrong? And this is what we want to lead with. And it's going to be something that's reinforced throughout the rest of the lessons. What can go wrong? And then after that, it's going to take on a relatively normal fl uh, flavor for a Greek language uh, course. In weeks four through nine, um, we're going to start working on Greek vocabulary a little bit, not a ton. Um, all told, we'll probably just do about 240 words, which is tiny for a language, um, but it'll be enough to see how the Greek language works and some very important representative portions thereof. Like I said, this is not a complete Greek language course. You're not going to be able to speak in Greek fluently to someone or ask some questions in Greek or go visit Greece and mingle with the locals. That's not the intent of this course. It's to give people a broad enough foundation to make sure that they can identify truth and error. And so it doesn't have to be super in-depth, but it needs to be uh, sufficient uh, to give people a, a, an understanding of how different things interact. And so we don't need to have the all the 5,000, 6,000 words that are in the Greek New Testament, depending on which version you're talking about. Um, we're going to just focus on about 240 of them. The most, uh, well, not all of them are frequently occurring, but most of the words will be the, the more frequently occurring words in Greek and places where a lot of things can go wrong. Like I said, that's the emphasis, truth and error. And um, also with those ones, we're going to talk about the major categories of words. So week four is going to be articles and nouns. Then we'll do adject, uh, adjectives and pronouns. Um, and then week six and week seven, uh, I'm kind of like to do conjunctions and adverbs together and then prepositions and particles together. I think I'll keep that order. Um, it might change a little bit once I get in there, but Six, week six and seven is pretty sure for doing those things. Um, weeks eight and nine, I'm still kind of 
I'm much more so eh, about how I want to do those ones. Right now I'm thinking of doing um, verbs over two weeks. And anyone who knows Greek verbs, if you actually really want to learn them, it's going to take a lot more than two weeks, uh, than two lessons. But um, as far as going over the basics of what it means, if you're if you, if you see a parsing guide on on the word, what each part means, I think I can get that done in two lessons, so that you can do at least some basic parsing. Um, but I'm not really sure how I want to break it down. Right now, I'm basically doing regular verbs and then in infinitives and participle participles on another lesson. But I might switch that up instead of saying basically what category of verb it is, just to basically focusing more on the parsing of verbs themselves so that we talk, spend a lot more time talking about uh, what the subjunctive is, what the indicative is, and things like that. Um, I haven't completely made up my mind on that one. Week 6 and 7 I'm pretty sure about. Weeks 8 and 9, that is probably a little bit more subjective, uh, subject to change. Um, Verbs is going to take at least two lessons no matter what. Um, that's just <laughs> the way Greek verbs work. There's, if you want to get anything done with Greek verbs, there's no way you can cram it all into one lesson. It's just not going to happen. In fact, it really probably should be more than that, but um, we don't want to make this too burdensome for people. So we're, we're honing in on particular things and also particular pitfalls, like I said. This course is very much so interested in helping people identify truth and error. And then week 10 is going to be a conclusion, um, you know, wrap everything up, uh, see where we are, and also a, a chance for me to get some feedback from the students and those kinds of things, try to figure out what they learned, what they didn't learn, those kinds of things. And I'm still trying to figure out decent ways of assessing that, uh, which brings me into the next part, how the lessons are generally going to work. The, the basic pattern is that each lesson, except for the first one, of course, is going to have a preview quiz or sorry, not a preview, but a review quiz over what the previous material was. And I do this just because it's necessary uh, for people's learning. If people don't think that they're actually going to be held accountable for their learning, they don't learn, generally, unless you're a very self-motivated person. Um, so having a review quiz, and it doesn't have to be terribly difficult. My review quizzes are usually no more than five questions, but it's enough to make people actually, you know, try to keep things fresh. So yes, that, that lesson was a whole week ago. Um, but, at, you know, ask you a few questions about it, you know, kind of jogs a memory or two. And just knowing that you're going to have a quiz, even if it's going to be relatively small and relatively easy, um, it still makes you think. You still try to remember things, and uh, it helps you learn. And then we're going to go over the new material, uh, whatever the lesson happens to be for that time. Then we're also going to have a dedicated amount of time that we're going to spend just on exegesis. That is, interpreting the passages using what we've just learned. Why is this significant? Uh, how does, where do we actually see that in the text? So, uh, like I said at the beginning, we're going to focus a lot on pitfalls, but also with exegesis. That's the primary reason why we're, uh, we're doing this. What does this actually mean in the text? Where do we see it in the text? Um, we want to expose people to to the New Testament, um, not just to theoretical constructions and words here and there in isolation, but actually opening up the Greek New Testament and saying, okay, let's read through this and figure out what it actually means, what's important about this, how it applies to us, that kind of thing. And then if we have extra time in the lesson, um, we'll start in on the homework for the next week. And I really want there to be some spare time in each lesson for this, um, just because students, you know, tend to motivate each other a lot, especially when you have people who are there because they want to be rather than because they have to be. They can get together and bounce ideas off of each other. You don't want them to do all of their work that way, obviously, because you get that lazy person who says, hey, Fred knows all the answers. I'll just copy off of him. Um, but you least want to... Uh, started off that way so that there's a little bit more uh, motivation. I mean, having the, the paper ask you a question is one thing, but asking each other questions, you're going to learn a lot more that way. And so I want there to be some time for the students to interact over various examples and uh, some, some questions that staff can work through. And then as far as the homework itself is concerned, um, there is going to be some English and Greek vocabulary. Uh, like I said, for weeks four through nine, uh, there is going to be a, a Greek uh, vocabulary component, but also you're going to have to know some English words as well. Like, the, what is the subjunctive? That is an English word, um, 
but what does it mean? You know, what is the subjunctive? What is the indicative? All those kinds of fun things. And then there will also be some exercises for them to work through, and they're going to be primarily exegetical. Okay, so here's a, a phrase or sentence in Greek or a verse or whatever the case happens to be. Find your way through it. What is this about? Um, using the tools that you've learned, what's the important thing that's going on here, so forth. And then also providing uh, students with a pre-quiz. And this is the reason why my quizzes are relatively easy. I'll give my students a pre-quiz, and I'll tell them, you know, the questions that are going to be on your actual quiz are going to be from this. So I'll give them, like, you know, 20 questions or something like that. And if you can get those 20 questions down, then your uh, review quiz that you're going to have the next week will be a piece of cake, because it's going to come right from that. I won't tell you which problems I'm going to use, but it'll give you like 20 problems total, and then I'll pull like five of those for the actual review quiz. So it's really straightforward and really easy, as long as you actually do it, because when I give you the pre-quiz, I'm giving you access to all of the material. So it's not like it's hard, it's just a matter of doing it and writing it out, that kind of thing. Um, but anyways, that is the plan, and hopefully you guys found that instructive and helpful and gives you... Those of you who are actually interested in participating in the live class, um, if we can find those two extra people to do that, uh, what to expect in those kinds of things, and uh, hopefully a little um, bit uh, motivating for you guys who are actually interested in figuring out how the Greek New Testament works. Thank you very much for your time and attention. For those of you who are in Christ, go with God and be blessed. For those of you who are not, I pray that you would come to an understanding of the true Christ of history, the only genuine Savior of mankind. Amen.